If you missed this morning, Jerry Sandusky has been sentenced to 30 to 60 years in prison in the Penn State child sex abuse scandal. Effectively, it's a life sentence. Defiant Sandusky this morning gave a rambling statement denying all the allegations. Three victims also spoke, often fighting back tears. Among them, one said that he was still troubled by the abuse and he struggles with flashbacks. In a statement released to the Penn State University radio station late Monday, Sandusky said he didn't get a fair trial. They can take away my life, they can make me out as a monster, they can treat me as a monster, but they can't take away my heart. In my heart, I know I did not do these alleged disgusting acts. That today's sentence comes down three months after a jury convicted the former Penn State assistant coach on 45 counts of child sex abuse. And joining us now to help break down the sentence and also some of the messaging behind is Mark Furnish, criminal defense attorney, who's argued before both the Supreme Court and he's also a professor at Brooklyn Law. Mark, as always, thank you. You know, I, I didn't feel this way when I heard the verdict because it's effectively a life sentence, whether he dies of natural causes in right. prison or even makes it out or even uh, makes it that long. Or whatever other abuses exactly. are inflicted on him in prison. But everybody got hung up that it was 30 to 60 years. Can you explain um, why in, in the end it's, it's still doesn't a death matter. sentence? It's academic because he's not eligible for parole until after 30 years, which would make him 98. So... Uh, it's a functional death sentence. This is just an academic debate. 30, 60. 60 sends a, a bigger message, I guess, but I think 30 and dying behind bars is probably uh, sufficient for messaging purposes. Um, I wondered, and this isn't just obviously relegated to the legal world, right. we've seen a pattern here, whether it was through the church, whether it was through the Boy Scouts, whether it was through obviously this university and other institutions where people of power have put um, their particular industry or their particular niche before obviously the considerations of children, whether ignoring warnings of abuse or even turning a blind eye to abuse. Do you think this case has changed, if not even from the moral ethical standpoint, from the standpoint that says, my gosh, the entire institution will collapse here if we don't do the right thing right away? Well, I think it sends a very significant deterrent message in the fact that you have an upcoming criminal prosecution against two high-level university officials who buried this. And in my view, the burying of it is, is more abhorrent and repugnant than what Sandusky did, horrible as it was. Obviously, he's a very sick and twisted individual. Nobody chooses to be a pedophile, and I'm not crying any crocodile tears for him, but he can't help himself. Paterno et al., the people who covered this up, they acted with will. They acted volitionally, perhaps to preserve the good name of the university, but they actually put children in harm's way. They were beyond complicit. In my view, they're more culpable than he was. Well, here's where I want to bring the table in. I'm going to start with you, Mark. There's obviously civil cases already underway. Um, they've already brought in folks the university has to try and uh, settle these claims right. here. But the question of criminal exposure for among the people, the president, well, why um, isn't he the athletic director, yeah. for, for the powers that be along with the late Joe Paterno right. who were made aware and chose to not only not do enough, but to do in effect nothing here and to give this Put guy... Put the kids in harm's way. Right. Yeah. Should there be criminal exposure for these guys they would argue to say, I didn't put my hand on a kid. I didn't create the environment. Um, we, didn't, we didn't know. We didn't think. We turned it finally over to the authorities. Do they have an argument here or not? Well, Paterno passed before we could get to that. Spanier, the president, I'm not sure. I, I've always, it's always puzzled me why he hasn't been indicted and while the, why the other two guys are taking the fall uh, yep. for this coming up next year. So in my view, there should be uh, criminal punishment against the uh, upper management of the university because the university is an inanimate entity and can only act through its high managing agents. Can you agents. explain for the audience yeah. the legal standard here for where Curley um, and also Schultz, the two people that are facing some criminal exposure for this, what well, they overtly obstructed a grand jury investigation uh, that goes beyond yeah. in mere inaction that goes to obstruction of justice paterno uh, just didn't act properly and spanier i don't know what he knew and when he knew it but to me that's the guy i mean he obviously lost his, his job and his academic career is finished very significant collateral damage but why he's not in criminal crosshairs but i don't case know case also for the prosecutors in effect if not die, um, really be hurt by the passing of Paterno? 
I don't, I don't know. I mean, this was an open secret. It had been investigated in that community for a very long time. I don't think Paterno is the key witness against uh, these other Let people. Let me bring it up on a broader level that you guys at the table. Um, you have an athletic director. Uh, you have a VP at the university. Um, they were made aware of this through third parties. They thought that the coach, who obviously was too big in terms of power and influence at the university, was handling this one way or the other. Um, more than fines, should these guys see the inside of a jail cell? I mean, I just imagine you're a parent of one of these kids and you entrusted the university here, um, and then they looked the other way when they were made aware that something wrong was going on. Yeah, I, should these guys face criminal? I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an attorney. I'm a former Bronx prosecutor. I practice as a defense attorney for a, quite a while. Uh, it has to meet, in my f as far as the criminality, it has to meet certain you know legal standards, and that would be it. Uh, because it's because it's such an awful crime, and because people uh, didn't notify the authorities when prob when they definitely should have, it, uh, it may not reach the, the legal threshold of having criminality to it. But for those that were, you know, actually involved in, you know, seeing, um, you know, part, you know, not, you know, they were actually on the scene or had the opportunity to 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 stop this and knew of a continuation of it. I think that would start to you know, uh, you start to creep towards that line of criminal uh, responsibility. You know, I'm opening this up to a broader, and I know we're going to hit a break, but, and I know Andrew and I, we've had debates in this, but McQuarrie, um, quarterback on the team, he walked in and saw a kid um, getting sodomized in, in a shower, and he walked out because he was shocked. No, he made noise. He rattled the door really yeah, okay. hard. He thought that was enough. But to me... How do you live with yourself every day? Not, you're right, Tom. How do you but, live with yourself? But I think that society... And we'll get into this later with the sport. That shouldn't be optional. You should do something. Right. And if we have to punish you criminally if you don't, I'm sorry. Well, yeah. People get punished for covering stuff up all the time. Martha Stewart, <laughs> Watergate. I mean, the cover-ups are worse. Not in this case no, worse than the underlying I actions. The argument, I think the argument <clears throat> Richard's making is that he should be penalized for inaction, not for covering it up. Well, I think he should be criminalized for inaction because, he, you know, he, this, they made the show of sacking Sandusky, making him the sacrificial lamb, and then opened the barn door for him to come back and, and fool around there behind the scenes. Well, you'd be so saying they're acting in concert in some yeah, ways from a, legal, from, a, from, a legal, from a legal perspective, but also you need to have the legal requirements in that state. To they have a reporting of, requirement. Of a reporting requirement. Is there report? Oh, it's usually like in New York State reporting, for instance, for teachers is a requirement. Otherwise, it's a B misdemeanor, no, and that, that's pretty that's low, the though. Crux of the but I don't know that, you know, I don't know what coaches, if there's any real think, requirement. Though, I think that there's this gray area in people's minds where they can wiggle out and say, you know, I wasn't doing it, and I didn't really feel comfortable saying it. And you and sound, I totally, yeah. I don't know how you sleep at night doing right. that, but I think if you have to, in some ways, make the law tougher on one respect, you see something, you have to do something. Look, when morality, and if you don't want to put yeah, you, you right. want to get in the middle of it, which I think any person should do physically, but if you're not going to do it, yet the least you got to do is pick up a phone and call the cops. Well, absolutely, but that's a moral issue, and that's the problem. Is the question is, but should is how it be a far, legal issue? Well, if we make it that, we would. If we legislated that, and uh, if you know, otherwise, it's a very tough case to make out. Okay. I'm sure prosecutors would like this more is a, tools to do it. This is a state university. Yeah. These are agents, uh, people who are paid by the state of Pennsylvania. These are de facto government officials. Right. I mean, they have some sort of fiduciary and ethical. And who else do the children yeah, have? Who, who else do the kids? They fall into a civil world. Yes, there is, there is responsibility. No question. It's just the difference between is it civil or is it criminal. Believe me, I'm all for legislation for reporting right, reform. I got to jump to break. When we come back, though, Mark's going to stay with us because there's a big case before a court that he wants to appear for him, and that's the highest one in our land here. It's on affirmative action, always a hot button subject, and the University of Texas being sued by a white applicant who says she was not admitted because of her race. Our panel sounds off when we return. <laughs>